Haleluya. Amen. Ah, ngato ri jumbo de dum. Tinote nda mngari zivara nas kuti tiripano zvakare we are here once again to hear about Jesus. We are here again to partake of the bread of life, the word of God. We have got a very tight schedule to keep, so let me remind you that we are continuing with the seven seals series. And what we are going to do this evening is that we are going to be dealing with this, the fourth trumpet, the fourth trumpet, the fourth trumpet, which I have also subtitled the Tyatiren blemish. We are going to see about that blemish very soon. So, the seven seals, we are dealing with the seventh seal. It's a series titled The Seven Seals, but we are dealing in particular with the seventh seal. And what we discovered on the seventh seal when we attacked it on, uh, during the Revelation gathering, we discovered that uh, there was there was two events that are very important. We discovered that in Revelation chapter 7, Revelation chapter 7 is a bridge between the six seals and the seventh seal. So I intend to show you that the men, the, the four angels which were standing on the four corners of the earth. And we discovered that they were holding wind, that the wind uh, should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hate not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. So the seventh chapter of the book of Revelation, uh, uh, it chronicles the events that we also saw being uh, prophesied about by Ezekiel the prophet in Ezekiel chapter 9. And I hope we also discovered that because when we did the first message, we said we are doing a rundown. We want to summarize the six seals so that we may find a starting point to address the seventh seal. And what we discovered is that when we read the seals, we, 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 we come across events that happened in the Old Testament that are exactly uh, similar to the events that we are reading or that we are learning about in the book of Revelation. For example, we discovered the sealed book and we go we got into revelation chapter 7 and we found out that when uh, ezekiel when daniel when daniel was given those visions he then sought to understand the things that are written in the books and when we did that we came across a scripture in which daniel was asking to find out if he could learn uh, the meanings of the things that were in the book, we found out that in chapter, nine, 12, chapter, 12, chapter 12, Daniel chapter 12, from verse number 8, 
He says, and I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O oh my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed to the time of the end. So we are dealing with the seals, and the seals were spoken about in the book of Daniel. So the things that are happening now, when we begin to learn about the opening of the seven seals, we are continuously learning that the Lord gave prophecies concerning these things in the prophets in the Old Testament era. Uh, an example like I gave, it is in Revelation chapter 7, that is similar to the details that are chronicled in Ezekiel chapter 9. The Lord was angry. He wanted to destroy the people of Judah on account of their disobedience. That's Ezekiel chapter 9. And what happened is Ezekiel saw a vision. There were five angels, five men, five angels entering into the city with uh, instruments of slaughter. And one of the five held, um, there were actually six. One of the six, he held the ink horn and he was instructed to go around putting a seal on the mark on the foreheads of those that were weeping on account of the transgressions of Judah. And after the man with the ink horn was done, there was an instruction to the five angels, the five men with the instruments of slaughter. Do not spare, do not find mercy, do not try to, to allow them to live. Kill everybody who does not have the mark on his forehead. And that is what happens in Revelation chapter, chapter 7. The four angels that are holding wind by the four corners of the earth. As soon as the, the book is introduced, there was another angel, the fifth angel, who was given an assignment to go and put a mark on the foreheads of the servants of the Lord. So that those who have not received the mark of that angel would not be spared in the impending wrath of God. But it is also important for you to understand that when we talked about those issues, we also learned about the mark of the beast. And we discovered that when the mark that is being put on the foreheads of the servants of God is still in the process of being uh, inscribed or superscribed or engraved on the foreheads of those that are to be saved. Simultaneously, the beast, the Antichrist, is also going around putting his mark on those that are not written in the book of life. So it's not like there's going to be a period in which the servants of God are going to be receiving the mark of salvation. And then there's going to be another period in which the devil and his antichrist, they are going to go around putting the marks of the beast on the foreheads of the children of disobedience. No, it happens concurrently. It happens at the same time. When Jesus goes around sealing the children of God through the gospel that is being taught by the Holy Spirit, at that same time, the devil is on a rampage. He goes around, he puts the mark of the beast on the children of disobedience so that, number one, they will not receive the gospel of Christ. Number two, they will be reserved for the eternal condemnation on the day of the Lord. So, when we talk about the word mark in the Bible, don't always assume that it is the mark of salvation. There are two marks, two distinct marks, two different marks. The mark of salvation and the mark of the beast. And it is also very important for you to understand that there is, there is a message, I can't remember now, the title of head, but there's a message which we, uh, we, we were teaching the word, and I was saying, if you read Revelation chapter 13, the mark of the beast is said to be triple six. 
And I demonstrated through the scripture because the whole world has been blinded into believing that in order for one to be said to having a mark of the beast, he actually literally needs three sixes on their foreheads like a tattoo or some sort of mark on your body. But I emphasized, I, I remember repeating over and over again that the mark of the beast is not a physical mark. Remember the book of Revelation is full of idioms, proverbs, and riddles. I, I, I think the Lord gave us grace, so much grace, uh, I'm going to give you the title of the message if I remember it. But in that message, we then went to John chapter 6. And I demonstrated to those that were there that the message concerning the mark of the beast, triple six, was demonstrated in John chapter 6, verse number 66. John chapter 6, verse number 66. It is a scripture... <laughs> It is a scripture that gives us without doubt an emphasis on what is the mark of the beast because the mark of the beast is not in John chapter 6 verse 66 as in John chapter 6 verse 66 is a mark of the beast. No, John chapter 6 verse 66 tells us what is the mark of the beast. Now, who would want to read this scripture? But we can't just read one scripture we need to understand what is the mark of the beast. And so let's, let's get into John chapter 6. Try to attack or to read the, the passage so that we may get the context that leads us to verse number 66. So I'm trying to find out where we can start. Let's start from verse number 53. Who would want to help me reading this scripture? John chapter 6 was from verse 53 to verse number uh, 69. That way, it will be easier for us to understand how do we learn to define the mark of the beast. It is not in the number. Numbers are used by God in several occasions to point us to doctrinal matters. The mark of the beast is not triple six. Triple six is a location for the mark of the beast. Triple six is a serial mark of the beast. Mark of the beast, yaka buritskwa, ino wani kwa tika tresa, triple six. So I'm going to define the mark of the beast in two ways before we go to the fourth trumpet. John chapter six, verse 53 to 69, and then when we do that, we are going to understand verse 66, which is going to show us what is the mark of the beast. Go ahead, read. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, hath eternal life. And I will, I will raise him up at the last day, for my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. So he says, whosoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood, uh, he shall have eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. That is what he was preaching about, yes. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I, I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even shall, even he shall live by me. This is the, this is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna, and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. These things said he in the synagogue, as he taught in Capernaum. Many therefore of his disciples were, when they had, when they had heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? When the people of the synagogue heard Jesus saying, anyone who wants eternal life must eat my flesh and drink my blood. They said it's an hard saying. 
Who can hear it? Yes. When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Do this offend you? What and if you shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the Spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you are the Spirit, and they are life. But there are some of you that believe it not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were, who they were that believe it not, and who should betray him. And he said, Therefore said I unto you, that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. From that time, men of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will you also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou is the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now let's, let's look at what happened in the book of John. Uh, let's go back to verse number... Um, Let's go back to verse number 64. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not, and who should betray him. And he said, Therefore said I unto you, that no man can come unto me, except it were given unto him of my father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will you also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the word of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. The people who walked away from Jesus the Bible called them the disciples. Many of the disciples walked with him no more from that day going forward. Why did they walk away from him? Because he taught the gospel in a spiritual manner. If you want eternal life, eat my flesh, drink my blood. But if, if you are going to accuse Jesus of teaching the word in such a manner that people will fail to understand it, let me show you that he did explain what he meant by, if you want eternal life, eat my flesh, drink my blood. He said it in verse 63. In verse 63 he says, it is the spirit that quickens the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. If you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you shall have eternal life. Flesh and blood. My flesh and my blood. And then he says, the flesh is useless. It is the spirit that quickens, that gives life. The words that I have spoken unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Flesh and blood gives eternal life. The equation was very simple. It was actually more difficult to fail to understand it than to understand the equation. Now, if you eat my flesh plus drink my blood, you have got eternal life. And then he says, the flesh profits nothing. The spirit gives life. The words that I have spoken unto you. They are spirit and life. Do you see the equation now? Flesh plus blood 
equals to eternal life. Spirit plus life equals to the words. Which means the flesh was represented by the word. The blood was represented by life. The word of God that I have spoken unto you, it is spirit and it is life. So when he said, eat my flesh, drink my blood, he said, the word that I have spoken unto you, they are both the spirit and life. Which means, when you hear the word of God, you have eaten the flesh. When you hear the word of God, you have taken the blood. Do you understand it now? So the blood is the word of God. The flesh is the word of God. He explained it. There was no need for people to grumble or to strive over what he meant. He gave a proverb. He interpreted the proverb in one sermon. But what happened? In verse 64, listen to what happened. He says, but there are some of you that believe not for Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. And he said, therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. Verse 66, from that time many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. After he said, no one can come unto me except it is given to him of my father. What should be given unto you in order for you to come to Jesus? In understanding, people failed to understand what he meant when he said, eat my flesh, drink my blood, and you have eternal life. So, verse number 66 of John chapter 6, it is a scripture that tells us what is the mark of the beast? It is not the mark of the beast. It tells us what is the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast is something that deprives you of an understanding of the word of God, the true message of God. But it gives you an ability to understand a false message. Ukataza kunzuki Dio sign you to the mark of the beast. But the secret now, the secret now, when the word of God is being preached unto you, the Holy Spirit inside you is the one that un gives you an understanding. You, 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 will not, you will never understand the word on your own. You will always need to hear the word and have Holy Spirit dwelling in you giving you a sound understanding. If the Holy Spirit does not give you the sound understanding, you will never understand the word. So the Holy Spirit is the one that enables you to understand. If the gospel of God needs the Holy Spirit to understand, what does one need for him to understand the word of the devil? It is the spirit of the Antichrist. The spirit of the Antichrist in you is the one that enables you to say, I believe a false gospel. But when you hear the true gospel, you fail to understand it. So the people that walked away from Jesus, they walked away because they failed to understand what he meant when he said, you eat my flesh, you drink my blood, then you have eternal life in you. They didn't come to him to say, give us more understanding. We have failed to comprehend. We are puzzled. We are confused. They didn't have the desire to learn. When they fail to understand those with the mark of the beast, they don't ask more. They don't inquire more. They don't want to learn more. What do they do? They rebel against the gospel. They walk away from the gospel. They attack the gospel. They begin to antagonize even the preacher of the gospel. 
If people were able to walk away from Jesus, you will be very disappointed if you walk with Jesus, but you are scared of having people walking away from you. If Jesus, the greatest preacher of them all, preached a message and many, many, not few, many of his disciples, they were walking away on him. What about Apostle Chuenga? Does Apostle Chuenga believe or is he delusional to the extent of believing that when people come to gather and hear the word, they will all remain in the word? That would be a strong delusion. The people that walked away from Jesus, they are not newcomers. They were believers. In their own minds, they were believers. They had walked with him for a long time. So if you want to find people walking away from the gospel, no, walking away from the church, the most inciting thing that pushes people away from Jesus, it is the gospel. There will be one message that will anger you. There will be one message that will provoke you into anger. You will be saying in your, hand, in your heart, I thought this man was sent, but let me walk away. This is too much. I can't be it anymore. This is a seriously heretic message. But their, their, their problem was not the message was wrong. No, the message was correct. What was wrong is in their mind. They couldn't believe in their minds that this man wants us to eat him, drink his blood, and go to heaven. Now, look at me. Do you know the reason why they thought in their minds? Do you still remember when we started to read verse 53? They said, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? What, what provoked them to walking away from Jesus was not because they are smart people who were afraid of being turned into, into cannibals because of a church system. No. Think very carefully. Think deeply about it. Jesus was standing in front of them like this. And he said, if you do not eat my flesh, nor drink my blood, you will not have eternal life in you. Whosoever eats my flesh and drink my blood, I will raise him at the last day. And they thought in their minds, wow, how foolish this man can be. How can he turn us into cannibals? How, how, how does he expect us to eat his flesh? Imagine, think about it. Think about it. They became angry. If you read very well, they began to push one another. The Bible says it, they strove one against another. What was wrong? What? was wrong with them. One thing, they were kind of minded. To them when he said, my flesh, they never thought for a moment that there could be something spiritual about it. They were kind of minded. That is the reason why they said, how can this man expect us to eat his blood? If Jesus had said, if anybody eats my cakes and drink my mazoe, he will enter heaven, I tell you, he would have kept the whole church intact. Because in their minds, biscuits are good food. Mazoa is a good drink. So it was a carnal mind versus a spiritual message. There will be one outcome, rebellion. Look at me, look at me. Now, if those people have walked away because a spiritual message does not come down to their understanding because they are seriously carnally minded. These people who are walking away on Jesus because in their minds, they can't eat anybody's flesh. They can't drink anybody's blood. No matter how good that person is, it's something that nobody should ever think about. If this kind of people arrive at Makandiwa's church, and he begins to say, give us your money. Give God your money. Sow a seed, build an altar, offerings, and God will bless you. In their physical understanding, it's a reasonable message. 
Because it's a simple transaction I give to God, and when God brings it back to me, he multiplies it. God is able to multiply. He was able to multiply the five loaves of bread to feed thousands. So I'm sowing into the anointing of God so that he may give me more. That's how the minds of those that are built for eternal life is different from the minds of those that are built for destruction. Those that are given the mark of the beast. Ah, are you being surprised? Give us Jude, verse number 11. Give us verse 10 first. But these speak evil of those things which they know not. But what they know naturally is a brute beast in those things they corrupt themselves. Let's read verse 11 together. Go. Go unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and reigned greatly after the era of Balaam for reward and perished in the gainsayings of Kor. Do you see something here? Verse number 10 tells us that they are trying to understand spiritual things using a natural understanding. Verse number 11 says, no, 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 no. <laughs> Verse number 11 says, they are cursed. They've gone in the way of Cain and reign greedily, lustfully, after the era of Balaam for reward. What does that mean? This is a genuine money. Like a tanga kushan is a fungwa zenyam. If it's tenny, mano so manya man, no kuchiva kwa ni zango kwa Balaam. Do you see the combination? Failing to understand spiritual things equals to greed and lust after corruptible things. But what they do is they try to understand spiritual things using things that they know naturally. Now, the mark of the beast is a seal to condemnation. You tell something, some, somebody something that is spiritual. He will tell you, I don't understand it. It doesn't make sense. We are not talking about the physics and psychology and geography. That makes sense. These things are spiritual. They are not meant to make sense. Tell your neighbor, spiritual things are not meant to make sense. They are meant to be with faith in you. If God wanted to do things that make sense, Jesus would not have died for you. It doesn't make sense. What makes sense is for you to die for you. Mufun zare pa saidi ne wakuti. Shuno meka sense re kuti. Muna karura ama osa tuwa mbota ura nae. Ano ya okufira o zoke na kudenga. Iwo osa tuwa zwaro. Ozo zwaro o chinza haka to kufira. Uya kwa hari. Pane kuti iwo wakati aza. Uno ya zozotu wakabiri kwa uri mambara. Iwo uye nde kuno ya ni kwa padanda. Oriki to Oshina to Zot, those Yamuns, the Umba Vauya, Wandakite. The Upon Vauya, Wandakite. It doesn't make sense. Expecting the gospel to make sense is like building a hump for an aeroplane. Kugazerandeke hump. Ajit, it's impossible. Because your hump is on the ground. The, 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 the aircraft flies in the atmosphere. And there's no ground in the atmosphere. You simply need to allow it to go there. And if you say, how can a, an aircraft fly? So where are the roadblocks then? How do we mount roadblocks in the air? How do we install a hump on the roads? No! Those things do not apply to the aircraft. It just flies and soars into the sky. That's how it travels. It is designed for that. Hallelujah. Amen. So, the mark of the beast, when you come to Jesus like this, he tells you a very understandable message. Eat my flesh, drink my blood, and live. The flesh profits nothing. The spirit quickens. These words that I have spoken to you, they are life and they are spirit. 
if the words are the flesh and the blood, were these disciples, in brackets, expected to drink more or to eat anything else? Because he says, these words that I have spoken unto you, they are life in their spirit. He had already spoken the words unto them. In other words, they had already eaten the flesh. They had already drank the blood. They were not supposed to say, give us the bread, give us the flesh, give us the blood. No. He says, the words are the flesh and the blood. Matonjikaijeje Anoji kanya maya kunde kunuwa ropara kunya baka na wachi kanya maka watu nuwa rop poko zero paro no karamu nyam dosa kasi na kutanga cha anu nuwa ropa na kuchi kanya maka anoji kanya maya na kunuwa rop poko zika na msi na kuchi kanya maka ropa muri one dosa kai vin paka juwa chi juwa katanga mji la shuwa nuko zopa mukombe shino pesi wa mukombe mukatanga na mukombe mukudi yaka deu kapasi na mawanga saka mene mapari zane ma saka paro kuchi anoji kanya maya kunde kunuwa ropara ngo anu wana ubenyu. Over us, what in your mind, I'm a duro. I go to a funge, go to a physical flesh. Do you are good? The flesh profits nothing. If the flesh profits nothing, the blood in the flesh will also profit nothing. Because the flesh that profits nothing is the one that carries the blood. The flesh is profiting nothing, so does the blood that comes out of the flesh. Which means those who were wondering in their minds, does this man expect us to drink his blood and eat his flesh? They are already sorted out. Nyamaya ya tali, chiti tika chiki nyamaya kere, doya nzai, nama turo sakatiripo, chile getins wot inyama ipi haru kureva. These words that I have spoken unto you, they are life. And they are spirit. We have already eaten the flesh. Because remember, these words are part of the message. So if you are written in the book of life, if you have got the seal of salvation, you will not ask him, what should I do more? Nothing. You simply need to continue to hear these words. If you don't eat the flesh, sorry, you have already eaten the flesh. Because man's watch it. Anojika nyama yangu ne kunuwa ropa rangu. Anu wana wapenji. Matojika. Lutatu mashoka yuwa yaka. Donya mayachu. Saka na musinga hindeka. Chatosara kwa akuruza. Kujika bezi ma matojika kudara. Asina kujika dea sata anji kwa mashoka yuwa ya. Sa wakata nike nyama ya mwuzuru kunye epo otojika. Wasizi wa kupizu. Kutipani nyama ya dawiji kwa. Asiri ya taurele. Nando dia taurele. Donya mayachoka. Tukujika kwa ajo. Saka waka hindeka itati nike nyama ya mwuzuru. Sama wama tojika. But we are just serious. We are just trying to know parara. Kure wa kuti vangiri wa kashika pariri. Iye shine shi tiruku pariri zari chiti Jesu arimu vangiri. Today we are preaching and we say Jesus is now only found in the gospel. The Bible says we no longer know Jesus after the flesh. That's Second Corinthians chapter five, verse sixteen to eighteen. We know no, no man after the flesh. We know no longer Jesus after the flesh. So we know Jesus in the spirit. He is in the gospel. When you hear the true gospel, you have heard Christ. You have met Christ. You have seen Christ. Have you understood that? It's, 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 it is too possible, and we see it happening every day, that the people, after hearing Jesus, they are walking away. And we wonder, how does somebody walk away from such a true gospel, such a genuine gospel, such an adulterated gospel, such a pure message that is not even mixed and diluted by ideologies from some men, a pure message presented through endless recitation of scripture. 
the messages that we preach here, nobody can challenge that they are false. Because the, the messages are based, they are banked, they are anchored on scripture. And if you want to defend or if you want to criticize a message, you have to open the scripture. So if we open the scripture as we present the gospel, there will be no more scripture for you to open to say, I'm opening this scripture, therefore the message is wrong. You see now, as, as pure as the messages that we preach are, people are still walking away from Jesus. And some people are surprised. I've shared the word with my sister. I've shared the word with my brother. I've shared the word with my cousin. My cousin tried to defend their false gospel and they have opened the scriptures until he was dumbfounded. He couldn't even open his mouth to say, I think we are doing this right because of these scriptures. There are people with whom if you make discussions concerning the gospel, as you open scriptures, you will spend an hour and they can't even open one scripture to allege that what they believe is true. And yet after you do that, they walk away. They walk away, they go. Don't be surprised by that. People walked away from Jesus. They did so, my friends. They walk away from life, so, and they went away to death. Do you think you are not going to experience the same? Because Jesus is the gospel personified. And yet people walked away from him. What it has here, Tato so I just asked them, so, one of a chief, up on a jess, of a shenta kuna one, but you see a open, you walk a mirror, so. Those sagas often the pita got in a way, a moment, pita got it, shenta EP. Dibi me gamine shoko rupei. Taka tenda, she chokwadi chokwadi. Kuti dimi kristu wacho. Manako mana wamarim pei. Ah. He said, we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the son of the living God. There's nowhere else for us to go. So there are two types of people. Peter and the other apostles, they had the mark of salvation. When they had the word of God, they said, give us verse number 68, they said, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. We want to raise a generation of believers who say, if you chase me out of the church, I will come every day and hear the word from outside the building. Because to whom shall I go? Because these are the words of eternal life. Saka, do you see the two people? The mark of the beast people, they walked away from him. The mark of salvation people, they said, to whom shall we go? Peter Peter Jesus. 
Road ya kupuruwa yo aitaure dosha ya kana kira. But Jesu ya kanga iri road nita say. Shekutika na road ya ya kako sota shekuti do. Ukatinda haku buda mu road. Aumbo isote sa shekuti ino sara ichiti kuwa wako inda kupi. Ino sara ichiti. Jinoka no jidako inda buruwe ucha zoga. Aumbo pinda mburuwa ya usina kufura ne banu to kutawurira. Dini road ini inda kupuruwa. Dosha kaita jeso. Usafunge kutu kubapa fangeri. Ungasote se jeso. Akazo jindu kwa jeso kutawuna kuzombo zoka murodi yake. Ane nga jizoto wenda kuzwaromoto. Dio the only explanation. Aumbo fuwaka wana ime rodi ya kutunota wakutenga jeso kutukoya kazo ene kubukove. Yo ta ta na mai da kuti vhairi rataka tsvaga imwe. Iwe uri wewe wena kupi. Kudenga zvakoka shatira mwara akarongeka ibo give your neighbor a high five. Mwara akarongeka zvekuti kudenga zvaka kuita. Kudenga zvaka kuita. Akarongeka zvekuti kudenga akagadzira in the way yekuti ka. Unokofanyira kuita bow down to Jesus. Was Kumaron did our Nogona Sanganaka, Bengari, Guaga, Kupai, Rodia, Kanyan, Zaka, very Zaka, Shika, as Nakoshan is a Rodine, Dakocha, Iri official. Shinokudenga, Kuna, Kambay, Dako, Munwesa, Dakota, Kudenga, Kuda, Tanga, Panyakabana, Panamunaka, Benda, Kudenga, Akazoka, Jesus, Zaya Peru, Rod Zaka Wanda, Musuaka, Tindini, Rod. Di akanga ro kutanga kudaro. Akuna mungu waka benga hati ndini roti. Enda akuna mungu wa foot. Aka zoti ndini roti. I one road. Zekuti kana wakata chete kuenda kudenga. Unotongo zoka kurodi ya shoyo. Uka shai kwa murodi yoyo. Kudenga kwa cha usike. Saka kakara kudenga sa ano zoti. Akuna anu ya mdara msa mwenye peruwa. Ini ndi indi cha kuhuzi. Yekuti kuruku ya nengi na nengi. Vanevesi wanuda kuya kuno. Bacha pfura ne pandiri. Ini ndi ndaka mbunge ndiri kuno ndika endaye koko. Ezu no ndaka zoka. So we are going to read Isaiah 66. I am also going to show you the mark of the beast. From verse number 1 to 6. Isaiah 66. John chapter 6 verse 66. And we are going to read Isaiah 66. From verse 1 to 6. The mark of the beast. Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you build unto me and where is the place of my rest? For all those things hath mine hand made and all those things have been said the Lord. But to this man will I look even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit and trembleth at my word. He that killeth an ox is as if he slew a man. He that sacrificeth a lamb as if he cuteth, he cut off a dog's neck. He that offereth an oblation as if he offered swine's blood. He that burneth incense as if he blessed an idol. Yea, they have chosen their own ways, and their soul delighted in their abominations. I will also choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them. Because when I called, none did answer. When I speak, they did not hear. But they did evil before mine eyes and chose that in which I delighted not. Hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word. Your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake, said, let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy, and they shall be ashamed. A voice of noise from the city, a voice from the temple, a voice of the Lord that rendereth recompense to his enemies. Who are his enemies? Those that do not hear his word. And so let's go to Revelation chapter 13, verse number 11. To understand the mark of the beast. Because we have read the scriptures that give us a literal triple six. And like I told you, the triple six is not the issue. The triple six is the location of the mark of the beast. 
Triple six, I see your mark of the beast. Mark of the beast, you know what you call triple six. Amen. Ah. Magwara, it's an angura, I know to mark a shikara is six, six, six. But in it, you could, Shira was a mari. Tavering a triple six, Maviri. John 6, 66. Isaiah 66, 6. In the Mavesi, I am a very accurate daughter. I shall damnari, Zilakut, Zilu, Pavalengivak, Valengivak, and Davanani, Lano Fari, Lakuita, Sakarurama. Hallelujah. Vasinga Terri, the Shokora Mangari, Dover, Kunzina Mangari, Lalengivang, we vow, the Kuvaranga, the Kuvarova, the Kuva Paradza, near Shazang. Revelation chapter 13, verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns. This the is earth. the spirit of the Antichrist. I don't have time to start from verse number 1 of Revelation 13. From verse 1 to 10, the message was about the beast itself, which was the firstborn of the dragon. The dragon in the, in the, in the uh, imagery is the devil. And the beast, the son of the dragon, is the Antichrist. That was the spirit, that, that, that was the beast that was seen rising up out of the sea. The word the sea there was referring to the underworld. The Antichrist rose up so that he might fight the message of the cross. The Antichrist did not rise up before the cross. He rose up at the same time that Jesus rose up from the dead. Are you hearing this? Amen. That is why the day Jesus rose up from the dead, the first false most message was disseminated. He never rose from the dead. His disciples stole his body and went away to hide it somewhere else. That was the first message of the Antichrist. The Antichrist was a project that the devil was allowed to launch to counter the, the message, message of Christ. Christ. From, From Genesis, Genesis to Malachi, the, the Antichrist was not operational because he can't be an Antichrist without something to counter. There was no Christ in the Old Testament. Christ is a New Testament doctrine. Antichrist <laughs> So in Revelation chapter 13 from verse 1 to 10, the Bible teaches us about the rising up of the Antichrist, the false Christ, the contender against Christ, the enemy of Christ, the preacher of a message that fights against the message of Christ, but that looks like the message of Christ. It sounds like the message of Christ. But believe me, it is not the message of Christ. Jesus did not rise up. His body was stolen by his disciples. That is the message of the Antichrist. But if you say, but he mentions the word Jesus. Yes, he mentions it. But not in a manner that glorifies Christ. No. Whenever the means the word Jesus Christ is said by somebody, do not assume that because he has mentioned Jesus in his message, therefore he's telling the truth, he's preaching about Jesus. What about Jesus? The devil in the garden spoke to the woman and said, God said in the day you shall eat the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. You shall die. That was not true. In fact, if you eat this fruit, you shall wisen up. 
The devil used, he mentioned the word God, but not to honor God. No, to, 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 to blaspheme God, to speak about God contemptuously. Hallelujah. So Jesus in Matthew 7 says, not everybody who says, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that hears the word of God and doeth it. In that day they shall say, men shall come in my name and say, Lord, did we not cast out devils in thy name? Did we not prophesy in thy name? Did we not do mighty miracles in thy name? That's verse number 21 to verse number 23. And he says, on that particular day, I shall say unto them, depart from me, you workers of evil, and go to where you were doing your evil works. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. I never knew you. But they said, in thy name, we did this. In thy name, we did this. And the one who bears the name comes, and then he rubbishes all those messages. He says, I never knew you. He didn't say, I knew you, and then at a particular time in life, you, you, you went rogue, you rebelled. No, he said, I never knew you. Hakuna ano njuru wa mpuki rope nyozo zima. Ukatona, saramba, shuku poneskwa. Hakuna mpuki gara urimo. Ukwari mpuki gara wano wano zima zizi wake. Waka mira kuti ata ure nye nyama ni ropa. Wati isu za ichechi za tikona. Takwenda. Wangu wano takambona mata na. Ae wakangari pupa maina mata. Anapo viraka na mata. Anapo viraka na mata. Hakuna anu na mata hachi sompo mira. Yes. Ukatona mira anapo viraka na mata. Anga haripo paka pachi na matu kwa. Yes. Yes. Ataka tiza na he. Makapu dani andina apana uza. Amuna uziza. Itita atiri ipo pae ziza. Imi maka ziza. Chihi nebe parajure. Jumari zauza amuna utora. Ndo uziza hiko. Taura ya kutu uim klasi maka ziza. Mdea ya uya everyday. Hallelujah. Let's go to Revelation chapter 13. So from verse 11 going downwards, the Bible begins now to tell us about the spirit of the Antichrist. But like I said, the Bible uses similes, idioms, proverbs, and riddles. It says, I beheld and another beast coming up out of the earth. Remember, the earth represents the man. Earth represents the man. So this beast was seen coming out of the earth because the spirit of the Antichrist, it operates from within man. That's why he saw the beast coming up out of the earth. Amen. That's why in First John 4, from verse 1 to 4, he says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but test every spirit to see whether they are of God. Every, for false, many false prophets are gone out into the world Every spirit that confesses that Jesus is coming in the flesh is of God. But every spirit that confesses not that Jesus is coming in the flesh is not of God. It is the spirit of the Antichrist. Do you hear that now? He says, test every spirit. And soon after he says, test every spirit. He then says, for many false prophets are gone out into the world. Well, are you discussing about false prophets or you are discussing about the spirits? Test every spirit to see whether they are from God. Give us verse number one, first John 4. Test every spirit. Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Why? Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Kutimuone uti yaka vakuna mngari ere. Haisi mngaya yese yaka vakuna mngari. Nekuti wa profita wa jinji we nema waka bujira mnika. Tiri kutesta wa profita we nema ere. Kano tiri kutesta mngaya. Shukansi edo shu atiri kutawura iso. Tiri kutesta mngaya bati wa profita wa jinji we nema waka bujira mnika. Shino sangana papi shu mngaya ne wa profita we nema. Ne uti mngaya amusiku zombo ona mchikija mfura pachiborane mngaya wita iso. Muno ona urimu munu. Pamuno nziko waa kupariza, ndo pamuno tu uya usu wa mngarui, uyu ndi wa mngarui, uyu ndi wa antikristu, uyu ndi wa mngarui. 
You taste the spirits from the mouth of men. When you hear somebody testifying, listen carefully and try it. Prove it. Test it. Discern it. So when he spoke about the gift of descending of spirits in 1 Corinthians 12, he was not talking about telling people whether their tongues are from God or no. No. The gift of descending of spirits is the gift of proving or trying the spirits. It is an ability to distinguish between a true message of Christ and a message of the Antichrist. This is the beast that was seen coming out of the earth. You can't see this beast if you don't come across the earth. Paniki pa ine earth ndo pa uno ona chikara ichochi. Saka earth moon hare munyama. Do you reckon the earth ibaba? Chikara chaka uno kwa shibuda kufa munyika. Chimwe ya cha antichrist. Chisinga manifest pasina moon. Chaka mwe ita mwayamu chene. Haombo foka manifest pasina moon. Hapa na chata saka na mwayamu chene chifa kwa gaza lendi. Haombo one mwayamu chene chifamba. Kutubate mwayamu chene. Unoto taurane munu so. Utu yana mwayamu chene onu. Ani mwe ozina ono muti gati furesha jeso. Ugo ona haku tisifu yumani otu uyu. Ndo chikara chia cha ita uwa chiripa paish. Chikara chia cho kutushibate. Une nda pa eti ndo pa ono no chowana. Saka eti ya ita uwa. Ndo dry ground ika. Ya kata uwa kujene sisi wana. Let the waters be gathered in the hollow places. And let the dry land appear. And the waters he called the seas. And the dry ground he called earth. The word earth is referring to the dry ground. The dry ground refers to men. Men in the physical body. The beast was seen coming out of the earth. It is the manifestation of the spirit of the antichrist in man. What to testify concerning Christ who will classify you, who will qualify you. Are you a child of God saved to go to eternal life in heaven? Or you are a child of the devil? A brood of viper, a vagabond, ungodly men, reprobate concerning the, the, the truth. Whose God is your belly. So what happened? Genesis, Revelation chapter 13, verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb. Aha! He had two horns, not... The horns of a lamb, no, they are like a lamb. <laughs> Wait there. He had two horns like a lamb. Are you hearing? Amen. This, was, this was a beast. Yes. But he had two horns like a lamb. Amen. Do you see Matthew 7, 15? Yes. Amen. Beware of false prophets. They shall come in sheep's clothing, but inwards they are ravening wolves. So it is a beast, but the horns are that of a lamb. If you are not careful, you will say, how are you, Mr. Lamb, say? But it will tear you into pieces. It will devour you. It is a beast. It is not a lamb. Therefore, verse number 11 is painting a picture of deception. Kana uri shikara, uri tsa nyanga ze shikara, konyanga ze gwayana wa ziwa nebi. Ibele la kafeka dehere gwayi. Paku jika ndo pono zono, mmm, akuna gwayi rinu jika nyama. Kwa maura ya rime gwayi, maku jika sei. Tanda fane nzara, uti nzara yiku jika gwayi. Isu chuno ziva gwayi richifura. Paku jika ndo pa zino zone kwa kutu, mmm, akuna gwayi rakadaya. Ni paku chema. This is a wolf. Hallelujah. Amen. And he spake as a dragon. Yes. He spake the same words that come out of the mouth of the Antichrist. Just the same words that Jesus said in John chapter 16, verse 12 to 50. 
He said, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will talk about Jesus. The spirit of the Antichrist, when he comes, he will speak about the Antichrist. It's a parallel government. Verse number uh, and 12. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him. Yes. And caused the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, the spirit of the Antichrist does many wonders. Great wonders. He doeth great wonders. Is this a lamb? No. What is this? It is a beast coming out of the earth. It does great wonders. If you are going to be somebody who says, I want to see wonders for me to believe, this is your church to attend. Yes. He doeth great wonders. What about them? So that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Do you see how he does it in the sight of what? Of men. Does he do it in the sight of God? No. No, he does it in the sight of men. Yes. Which means he is doing it to lure people unto himself. Amen. He has no relationship with God. He doesn't care what God says or thinks about him. All he wants to do is for men to say, this is a true man of God. Amen. Amen. Did Paul ever say that he was standing in the presence of God? Never. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. I charge thee therefore before God. And before the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Apostle Paul wrote a letter to evangelist Timothy and he says, I instruct you therefore before God. As I write these letters or this word, this letter to you, I am in the presence of God. But she Peppers, you go to advertise as you know, the church by each on day. But I will say, Pamberi Pevan Pamberi Pevan. Amen. Rugusaka attention, Pamberi Pevan. I want to see Nonga Mape from town, Pamberi Pevan. I want to see Mariku Parena Twa, Pamberi Pevan. Let's hear what God says about doing things in front of people, Matthew 6, verse 1. What does God say about doing things in front of men? Take heed that you do not take heed that you do not your arms before men. Read again. Take heed that you do not your arms before men. No, can, can you rearrange this phrase? Can you replace you do not your arms with the words? Take heed that you do not give your offerings. Take heed that you do not give your, your offerings before men to be seen of them. To be seen of men. Do not give your offerings to be seen of men. 
What is wrong about doing things and recording the television as we give to the poor, we give to the orphans, we give to the old women, to the elderly in the community, we give blankets in the winter season to those street kids and to the orphans and the widows and we televise it and we publicize it everywhere for men to see what is wrong about that. Otherwise, you have no reward of your father which is in heaven. The moment you do things to be seen of men, you have no reward of your father which is in heaven. So how should we do it? Therefore, when thou doest thine arms, do not sound the trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do. The hypocrites, the, hypocrites. As the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Ah. Verse number 16. Moreover, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces. Ten days. We are fasting for 10 days. They disfigure their faces to show the whole world that they are fasting. When you fast, do not be as the hypocrites because they put on sad faces and disfigure their faces that they may appear fasting unto men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou when thou fast, anoint thine head and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy father, which is in secret, and thy father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. But the spirit of the Antichrist, it does great wonders before men. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Great wonders before men. Give us back that scripture so that he make the fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And deceive them that go on earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beasts. He deceives those that dwell on the earth by the means of the miracles which he has been given power to do. Which means the devil has been given a quota, an allocation of certain wonders and miracles to perform so that by those miracles he may be able to deceive. Not to fake miracles. Miracles, Baba. Miracles. Cha ana kuti ma fake miracles. Anza ano to nyengera, achi nyengera wa gerepani ka ne minana ya ine simba. Rekuita pamperi pechikar. Maona audience ya ano itira. Kumashule kwanza ane ita pamperi pevan. Pamperi shikanza ane nga achi ita pamperi pechikar. Ma miracles ake ana ni diyuti marave de de pamperi pechikar. Amen. Mm. Saying to them that. So, we, what does he say to those that go on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which he had the wound by a sword and did live? Verse, verse 15. And he had the power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. He then, in, 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 he then influences the leaders of the secular world that they should begin to pass laws that make it very difficult for people to exercise their liberty in Christ as they proclaim his gospel. It becomes illegal, like I was in India, it is illegal in India for you to say to somebody, your religion is fake, your religion is, your religion is in error, your religion is false. They will put you in prison for a minimum of five years. So you can only tell them, believe in Jesus Christ, but if you don't want, it's okay, continue with your religion, it's fine. Everything is fine. I don't know how many years they were going to put me in prison if I was an Indian. They got in Shibuda Nanzi, Makurakwa, Piraka, no tanga foot. Right dog under our court. 
He sent to me. And he had power. The, 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 the messages that we are preaching here, that's why you see people that are in positions of authority in the world, they are unsettled because of these messages. They feel that their feathers have been ruffled. Hear not, speak not. That's what they say. But we are not going to be silenced. Amen. We are going to be a people that are going to be happily offering ourselves, availing ourselves to face whatever challenges that are going to be put to us as consequences for defending the gospel as it is. Paul was imprisoned, he was beaten up several times. Because the message that he was preaching, it was not supposed to be preached. Because the spirit of the Antichrist is there in the parliaments, in the senates, in the cabinets of our leaders. When they pass laws, they are influenced by the spirit of the Antichrist. Right now, they've changed the educational curricula. Our children are forced to make a national pledge as they attend their primary schools, their secondary schools, their universities. The national pledge is inspired by the devil. The change in our education system, they no longer learn Bible knowledge and divinity at school. It has is, it is now been given another name. They have now in, in included Islam and the African traditional religion in those subjects. But we, we, we are not going to be worried about it. Because what we know is, even if they continue to preach Bible knowledge and divinity, whatever they were teaching was also false. So what they are teaching now and what they taught then is both wrong. Whenever somebody is to be born again, he doesn't need to attend a divinity class at A level or at an university. They need to hear the word of God as declared by a commissioned minister of Christ. Going to heaven does not need a Bible knowledge teacher at secondary school. It requires a minister of the gospel that is saint of Christ. So they were not doing better and what they've done is, is simply from another deep end to another deep end but they were both lost and they are both lost. Amen. And there's nothing we are going to do about it. We want them to say when they want to hear about Christ, they don't go to school, they come to the church. The school was never designed to be a place where people should learn about Christ. No, 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 no. If I was in charge of those laws myself, I would ban that people should not learn about religion at school at all. Religious issues are not for the schools. They are for the church. Let the church handle those issues. Why are you taking away the responsibility of the church and putting it in the confines of the school classroom doors and corridors? No. No. Three months, Verse number 16. Give us the scriptures quickly. And he caused it all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And in that, that no, no man, man might, yes. in that no man might buy or sell, save he that he has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Yes. Here is wisdom. 
Let him that he hath understanding count the number of the beasts. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. Did you hear that? Yes. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the Antichrist. For it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. The word three score is a medieval Hebrew terminology that means 60. So it's 666. Four score is 80. Okay? Three score is 60. Four score is 80. Two score is 40. So number of men number six is the number of men. I said I'm going to define the mark of the beast in two ways. Number one, I'm going to define it from the scriptures. Isaiah 66 verse 6 and John 6 verse 66. The other means by which I can define the mark of the beast, it is by calculating the triple six. Triple six, it means three sixes. Six, six, six. How many sixes do we have? Three of them. This is the mark of the beast. Six is a number of men because man was made. Man was created on day number six. What is the significance of number six? And why was man created in day number six? Because day number six, six is a number of men and it is also a number of insufficiency. In number, yes, you see, it's a number of things that are not perfect. It's a number of things that are not holy. It's a number of things that are insufficient and righteous. It's a number of things that are wanting. Things that are wanting. Zinu, zinu, zami, vunzo, zisina, kukwana, zisina, kururama, zisina, gone, kumira, pamberi, pamangari. That is why, even though man was created on day number six, but God spoke to man after day number seven. When God spoke to man in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, when he said, let man let be fruitful, multiply, subdue the earth and replenish it, have dominion. He was not speaking to men as in men was there and God spoke to men. He spoke his intentions for creating men. He spoke his objectives for creating men. I want this man that I've created to do this. Are you hearing this? Are you hearing this? Because God could not have spoken to men literally in day number six, for two reasons. This is number one. In order for God to interact with man, remember man was created on earth. He was created on earth. He needed a physical body for him to have function. Man without a body does not function on planet earth. That's why when the body is left by the spirit, you don't see the spirit moving out and the body cannot do anything. If you are on earth, you have got to be physical. The man that was created was not physical. It was a pneuma. It was a spirit. And the physicality of man is introduced after day number seven. When God says, in Genesis 2 verse 7, and then God formed man out of the dust of the earth, and he blew the breath of life into his nostrils, and men became a living soul, a living soul, a living soul. The word living there is important because it tells us that before men became a living soul, he was not living at all. Kurarama kwe munu kwa katanga apiwa movili. That's when God then spoke to men and said, I want you to tend this garden, dress this garden. You may eat of every other tree in this garden, but do not partake of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The second reason why God could not have addressed men before day number seven, it is because men cannot relate with God without a mediator. 
Men cannot relate with God without a platform upon which that relationship is based. Day number seven represents Christ. That's why on day number seven, only God had to rest. He did nothing but to rest. Nothing was created on day number seven. And God sanctified the seventh day and made it holy. The day that God sanctified is Christ. Christ is the seventh day. So the platform upon which God spoke to Adam after day number seven is day number seven. Ideally, what I'm saying is men without Christ cannot relate with God. Men at day number six, it was men without Christ, men outside Christ, men away from Christ. When God introduced day number seven, he introduced Christ. That's how God then spoke to Adam after day number seven. So Jesus comes and he becomes the way that leads to God. Before Jesus died, nobody ever spoke to God. Shumi, <laughs> Amen. <laughs> In it did not become pano. Dover quite quaoia, potombir, Yabiquana, my dear, because Nemanga and my very poor. Biria is our day with Jemma, she knows what the moon. Oh, good, 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 under his supervision. All right. So, the triple six, like I said, six is a number of men. And six is also a number of 
insufficiency. So when Revelation 13 tells us that the number six is the number of men, it is telling us that the message that comes out of the mouth of the Antichrist that is being inspired by the spirit of the Antichrist, it is a, a message that is centered on men and not on Christ. Those that preach a correct message, they preach a seven message. Three must six. Six, three times it appears in the triple six message. Three is a complete number of power. So six is a number of men, which means the Antichrist preaches men, men, men. There is no time that he preaches about God or Christ. Whenever the Antichrist opens the scripture, the message that is delivered to the people, it doesn't talk about Christ. It doesn't address what God has accomplished for men. It is a message that tells the people what men want God to accomplish. The true message tells men what God has accomplished for men. The false message tells men what God must accomplish for men. It is men telling God what he wants him to do. I want you to bless me. I want you to give me a husband. I want, to give, I want you to give me a house. Do this. Do this. Who is addressing who? It is men addressing God. But in the true message, it is God addressing men. The message of the Antichrist, it comes from men addressing God. But when you hear the true message, it is God addressing men. That is the difference between religion and the kingdom. Religion are people gathered together to find a God who addresses their needs, their desires, and their wants. But in the kingdom, people that are in the kingdom, they are subjects who please the king. They serve the king. Kanamuri mu kingdom, munaita zunofadza mambo. Kanamuri mu zitendero, munochaga mngari, anuita zamunoda. Moti tamaroku chaka. Takanzi kwa kutibara, anu fire. Beg from Ghana. Takata anu chaka, anu power. Beg from Uganda. Tatiri kwa kakande. Kwa kande ndia, anu shonza, anu rova, ripa Uganda. Ayu wani power, singa ite. Sakadora wakangu wa hindu, anu chaka, eh. Daneta na mwara sina power. Ututu, uyu wangu chaka wangu. Tiwa shite ndiro, asu wukudenga wangu. Wukudenga hachaku ya mngari. They are not chagavan. We don't have a parable of a shepherd who was being sought after by his sheep. The parable is about a shepherd looking for his sheep. Hakuna mfana nizo we gwaira icha agatenza akara sika. Mfana nizo uri mbaiberi. They were master. Mfuza ano chaka makwayake. Anunza haka siya 99, haka enda anu chagari mwechete, haka riwana. Sino inyu fangiri, ndi mufuzara, kuchagwa ni makwai. Fangiri ino parizi kwa neni manji, ndi mufuzara, kuchaga makwai. Saka uchwana makaimba, I have decided to follow Jesus. Kuto decide, waka garazo. Muka ngumisea jifabega, kutukisa tisi, reka hindi kumtera. Musa wa nunguwa eduka, I have decided to walk away on Jesus. Unu wajiku decide aso. Sino paura kaka jeta tabasiko, haka wana shasha ya shika. Paura katuko ndian, shika zinda shika ndini ishe, na nchuku chaga. Paura kati, ah, dija endepi. Do it chindu uzeza, munu da utindidi. Shika zimfana, pinda mguta ucha gana niyasi. Acha kuza shono fanya na kuita. Cheso asiri haenda Damascus Haka wanikuwa na Paulo Haenda ku Damascus Ndi Paulo Haka chaka munga ipaka Nipa Paulo na Jesu Ndi Jesu Murandu wakanda sajifai Jerusalem Achenda Ethiopia Asiri haka chaka Philip Philip ndia haka to chaka Murandu wakanda Atuma na Jesu Kwa haku shuka pangoro Shuka nzi mdara Muluku nzukisi sehele Shuka nzi iwe Hapanda nuru zira Hapanda kutuwa farwe jeshi Shuka nzi chikuira mgoro Unitana mguri 
unonzana zvakanzi ndopari dzandiri onzi mvangeri muranda akati eh ndatsvagwa nai kurasika kwese kuenda ku Jerusalem ta hanjitsvaga asiti kutsvaga zvinhu ndenda kangogara Ethiopia ai uya Philip muso wanda kangofunga zvekutsvaga mwari ndakapesa ndaku Jerusalem asi muso wanda kaona vhangeri chokwadi ndakaona rauya Mwari wechokwadi hachagwe nemunhu Mwari wechokwadi ndiye anotsvaga munhu ukuona waita wokutsvaga Ditsika mtando wori kutsvaga. Ditsunza mandiri wori kutsvaga. Ndigaura ni wori kutsvaga. Ndikambo wori kutsvaga. Let us go to Revelation chapter 8. We are going to address the fourth trumpet. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you enjoying the word? Oh okay, okay, okay. Before we do that, I I, I cannot forget I cannot forget. Do you still remember that the scripture says the beast that was seen coming out of the earth, it doeth great wonders before men. Great wonders before men. To lure men, to deceive men, to worship the beast. Let's hear Jesus talking about it. That's Matthew 24, verse 24. But before you open verse 24, give us verse 11 and then verse 24. Matthew 24, verse 11 and 24. He says, and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Do you see a similarity? Do you see a similarity? Yes. Now, can you open Revelation chapter 13, verse number 11? And we want to read that scripture together. Let's read it together. Go. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dra dragon. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. So, <laughs> ah. It was coming up out of the earth. It was rising. Coming up is meaning the same as rising. It's just diction. Kungo shinja mazwi. Nda aku kuira. Druku ya kumsoro. Shakafanana. The beast was seen rising out of the earth. And in Matthew chapter 24 verse 11. Jesus says. And many false prophets shall rise. And, and shall deceive many. Okay, give us this, give us this one, Revelation 13. And I stood upon the sand of the sea. You stood upon the sand of the sea. What did you saw? What did you see? And saw a beast rise up out of the sea. I saw a beast rising up out of the sea. Having seven heads and ten horns. This is the Antichrist. Now, do you see that there is an element of rising? Rising means three things. Yes. Number one, rising means pride. Yes. If something is rising up, it is priding itself. Amen. Rising means being elevated. Something that is being, it is going up. It is gaining height. If something is gaining height, it means it is flourishing. If something is gaining height, it means it wants everything else below it to look up unto it. So if the false prophets are rising, they are gaining height above the congregations to which they minister. So that when you attend a church of a prophet that has risen up, what do you do? You look up to him. But look at the direction of one that is rising. He is going above you, which means you, are, you, you remain below and they continue to rise. So that as they continue to rise, you begin to lust after them. You begin to desire to be like them. You begin to, you to say, Zalo, so that when they deceive you, they deceive you with authority of the new acquired position. I am better than you. I drive a better car than yours. I live in a better house than yours. I have more money than you. I am now listed on the London Stock Exchange. They have risen up. 
But most importantly, rising up is also an element of challenging the position of God, yes. the position of Christ. Yes. Rising up is an element of idolatry because each time the children of Israel swayed from the law of Moses, they acquired foreign gods. The Bible says they put them on high places. You can't worship something that is below you. Everything that you worship, it has to be at a higher vantage point, at a higher altitude than you. That is why the Bible in Acts chapter 1 tells us of one that has risen, 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 risen. When Christ has done and accomplished everything that he had come into the earth to do, he rose up and ascended to heaven where he is seated on the right hand of the throne of God so that everybody who comes to God, he bows down to Christ. So the element of rising up is an element of trying to take the position of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, you may read Acts chapter 1 on, on your own, but I want to read Acts uh, chapter 5 so that we may hear the testimony that came out of the mouth of a rabbi of Israel. His name is Gamaliel. Gamaliel was a professor of law. He is the one who was a lecturer to Paul the Apostle in the days of his waywardness. And when they had arrested Peter and those that he was working with in the gospel, they wanted to conspire to kill them. But listen to how Gamaliel uh, restrained them from shedding the blood of the early apostles. Let's hear verse 34, Acts 5. Then stood there up one in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, had in reputation among all the people and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space. They were arrested for preaching the gospel of Christ. So Gamaliel stood up. He was a doctor. Do you still remember that? And Gamaliel said, let them go out a little bit so that we can do our own internal caucus meeting to determine what we should do to them. And he said unto them, after the apostles were taken out of the council house, Ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what you intend to do is touching these men. Be careful on what you want to do concerning the apostles. Yes. For, be For before these days, read verse 36. For before these days rose up the... Theodas. Theodas. For his... before these days, what happened? Rose up Theodas. Boasting himself to be somebody. Theodas boasted to be somebody. To whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves, who were slain, and all as many as obeyed him were scattered and brought to naught. And they were brought to nothing. Many people, about 400, they followed the risen or risen up Theodas. Theodas aga simuka. Vanu wakatumte ra simuka ayabuka ayabuka akupuka. Akuku simuka akupuka. Verse 37. After this men rose up Judas. After this men rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the, of the taxing and drew away much people after him. He also perished. And all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. So Judas also of Galilee rose up. And so many people followed him. But they also perished likewise. Yes. The people that rose up are not ministers of the gospel of Christ. Amen. They are wayward preachers of the gospel of the Antichrist. Yes. When the of Hungary, Antichrist, they were rose up. Rise up, we will want Christ. What Christ to await a rise up? What Christ to Vanungo Danwa? They are called await a rise up. Yes. So the difference between ministers of Christ and the ministers of the devil, the ministers of Christ, they are called. The ministers of the devil, they rise up. Ano Simuka. Ah, Udi Magaya, Rosim Gero, Oscar Magasimka. Magasimka, what again? And, and you know what they have done? The, my guy has paid $700 as a fine for contravening the medical act and so forth. 
The truth of what happened is that they took more money from him through corruption so that they can ask him to pay a pittance of $700 is fine. What Magaya did was a serious crime. He needed to be arrested and put in jail for what he did because he, he, he affected the emotions of people that are sick of the HIV disease. He promised them something that he can't prove that it can work for them. It affects the psychology of the population of Zimbabwe. If it was a serious, a, 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 a fair judge, justice system, Magaya should be in jail right, right now. The reason why they've allowed him to pay that, there are people outside the walls of the courts who are involved. He pays them as usual to allow him to steal more and to give some unto them. Dangari love more maduku akaita zva aguma. Le hapo 30 years izvezvi. Kana tenda ibiti. Apa vari kudaro ndandi wo uta aguma magaya. Zvino aguma yakaguma isati yatanga. Aguma zvayakazoita. Aguma so Now, rising up, rising up, rising up, rising up is coming out of the ground. So Jesus rose up from the dead and he rose up to heaven from the ground. We don't rise up. We ascend. Because the foundation is Christ. And there is no rising up because the foundation has been laid already. You see now. But when it rises up, when you go move, you can tell us that you have to move. 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 You have to Christ was involved. Kutuma kwa 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 mvunza kuti. Zwaka vakupi, zwaka tanga nani. Fangiri ya uruku pari zaka vakunani. Hakuna mua kamba yipari zainu tanga nae. Sangadoka rani chitoro ni kanaori mfundis. Kana kono uruku pari zaka kwa dene. Usa mbonyanyo vizineza stereke. Iko chaka wana uruku pari zaka kwa fanesa uruku pari zari mbaibe. Uka mshaya uruwe nema. Uka wana uruku timo te sharamba, tito sharamba. Paolo, Zaramba, Peter, Zaramba, Judas, Zaramba, Arestas, Epaphras, Philemon, Jude, James. It don't go for a baby. Take a time. Because I could not show me a Japanese as you know, and it's no more Paris, Gopani Gabana. Fangeri, Saga Paris, Gogdara. So, we can go to Paris, Unongo, Faranids, and Evam, Karagora, and Dagunu, Kosu, Kunuka, Kushaya Foundation, Kunuka, Kushaya, Paul, Dora, I will. And we don't want to go to Tanga take a good day. So, could not tell a papa, pan. I'm going to go Ah, 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 ah. The good thing, Dagatora, Momchin, that she tea, in it is a good day, ne, Kachech, Kanyoana, and Kwani say, they got ah, Zinani Kachech, Kakata Kanyoana, Skaji Pariza, and get a good dara. Pada kuti ita cheche kudara, ya kupari za fakiri yowani. Saka na mta orote, romeni katole ki cheche kudara, ili kupari za fakiri yowani. Jara ya manja, ili cheche manja, 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 fakiri ya chomanja. It's traceable to the cross. Amen. Shifu zaraba sana, pokuta upita ipi ayu. Fangiri ni nyowani. Isuti ne fangiri reku dara. Saka cheche reku dara de ipi manji. Tisuka ba. Because fangiri ni ndi reku dara. Roma ndo cheche manji manji. Because maswa na poro kwa kusina na mai maria msande. Saka tanga iso shishu. Saka muno mamu na mai maria msande. Kuro tiripa cheche yepa yana poro. 
Ya mbia mai Maria ina mbia ana inde manje manje kai mbia ana war ba fesa ni Funzar ba zar ba kuti mbia ana wakan ba bone re Ha wakan ba bone mbia ana Revelation chapter 8 verse 12 to 13 Revelation and chapter 8, verse 12 to 13. And the fourth angel sounded the third, the third part of the, sorry. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars. So, as so the third part. So this is the star, the sun. And I'm going to divide. Okay, 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 okay. I'm going to divide the sun into three. So the third part of the sun was darkened, which means there was no light coming out of the sun. When the fourth angel sounded the trumpet, the third part of the sun was darkened. And the third part of the moon, the third part of the moon was also darkened. And every star every star had one third of itself Darkened. Yes, what happened? In the third part of the moon, in the third part of the stars. So this is the moon, this is the sun. So is the third These part. These are the stars. So yes. is the third part of them was darkened. Yes. And the, and the day shone not for a third part of it. The and day. The, on the day he had light for 12 hours, 16 hours. And the night likewise. So the night he had no moon for one third of its span. Now, verse number 13. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of the heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the, tr of the three angels. So, are yet to sound. Now, so this is a very important incident when the fourth angel blew the trumpet, uh, the sun was darkened, one third of the sun was darkened, one third of the moon was darkened, and one third of all the stars, they were also darkened. Now, we want to understand the mystery of these things. I want us to read Revelation chapter 2, verse 18 to the very end of chapter 2. And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira writes, this Now, thing, are you listening? This is now, uh, remember we are saying, the seven trumpets are the seven letters. So what we are doing now, we want to, uh, we want to compare what, what happened when the fourth trumpet was blown and the contents of the letter that is written to the fourth church, which was in Tayatira. Tayatira. Uh, can you read further? These things say the Son of God, who had his eyes like unto flame of fire, and his feet like, are like fine brass. The one speaking to the church at Tayatira is the Son of God. I know thy works and charity and service and faith and thy patience. In thy works 
and the last to be more than the first. The church at Thyatira is being commended by the Lord. The Lord says, I know your works. I know your charity. I know your service to God. I know your faith. I know your patience. I know your works. And the last of your works are more than the first. When you started in faith, in the journey of faith, your works were not as much as they are now. Not with, notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. Even though I commend you for your faith, your works, your charity, your service to God, I've got a few things that I do not like about you, church at Tyatira. Because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel. Woman, you, that woman Jezebel. Because thou sufferest that woman Je Jezebel. Now, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. Listen to me. My problem with the Tyatira is Jezebel. Jezebel. Yes. Which calls herself a prophetess. Jezebel calls herself prophetess. To teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication. Jezebel is teaching. Jezebel is seducing. Yes. To commit fornication. And to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Idolatry, yes. And I gave a space to repent of her fornication. I gave Jezebel space to repent. And she repented not. Jezebel did not repent. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. Yes. And I will kill ye children with death. God is going to kill the children of Jezebel with the death. God kill ye children. Yes. And all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the, the reins and hearts. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. Yes. But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Tyatira, as many as have not this as have not this doctrine. Doctrine of Jezebel. It's a doctrine. As many as have not this doctrine of Jezebel. And which have not known the depth of Satan as they speak. Jezebel is the depths of Satan, yes. I will put upon you none other burden, but that which you have already hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my, my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. Yes. And ye shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to silvers, even as I received of my father, and I will give him the morning star, he that he an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. So you have got to keep the doctrine of Christ, you have got to keep yourself pure, you have got to overcome, to hold fast the doctrine of Christ till I come, till he comes, till he comes. It's not about what you do today or what you did yesterday. It's about till he comes. But there are some things that I want us to understand. The sun was darkened on its one-third surface. Uh, one-third of its surface was darkened. One-third of the moon's surface was darkened. One-third of all the stars' surfaces were also darkened. And uh, then verse number 13 says, Another angel flew past and proclaimed war unto the world because of the three last trumpets which are yet to be blown, which is going to be something that we are going to deal with in Revelation chapter 9. Today, we only meant to deal with the fourth trumpet. Now, there are several things. Uh, my board is just small, it's small, it's small, it's small. Uh, there are things that I want to teach you or to share with you concerning Tayatira. Uh, Tayatira, Tayatira, Tayatira. Tayatira was a city that is uh, a few, 
a few miles from Sardis. It is 27 miles from Sardis. Uh, Tatira is now known, is now a Turkish city which is now known as Akisa, A-K-H-I-S-A-R. We are talking about a city that is in Turkey today. It is known as Akisa. The word Akisa, it means the castle of white, the white castle. Uh, the word, the word Tatira, it means the castle of Thea, the castle of Thea, T-H-Y-A, Tayatira, it means the castle of Thea. But I want you to know that the city of Tayatira was well known for idolatry. It, was, it had deep roots in worshipping idols. The idols that were worshipped in Tayatira were Pelopia and Semiramis. Pelopia and Semiramis. But the most Prominent God in the Tartarian city is known as Apollo. A P O W L O. Apollo. And we know that we we know that there are a lot of um, there are a lot of people who are crazy about a brand which is known as uh, Apollo. It's it's an Italian brand. But it has got deep connections with this Apollo, the god of Tyatira. But when you wear those clothes, you don't have to worry about it because you are not wearing a god, you are simply wearing clothes. What they mean with those, with those words, that doesn't matter to you, okay? We know that idols are not gods because to us there is only one god. I say this because I know that after saying that the brand called Apollo or Apollo. There's another brand called Apollo. It is dedicated to this God. It is a very old God. One of the oldest gods of the Asia Minor community. You find out that somebody will begin to say, I don't wear anything that has got a brand of Apollo or Apollo. So we don't want to raise religious fanatics. We want to raise a generation of people that are faith that have good faith in Jesus Christ. If you begin to worry about the names of clothes and the brands of the clothes that you put on, you will end up walking naked. <laughs> there is nothing under this sun that is not dedicated to idols. There is nothing. Tell your neighbor, "Uta pana shiripani kapano shatino shandi sa chisina." dedicate kwa kujifana nizo. Kungota aime Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe is a name dedicated to the deities of the great Zimbabwe kingdom. So you can't say you don't want to be called a Zimbabwe because the name of our country is dedicated to idols. No. No. It doesn't change your spiritual identity. You use Zimbabwe as a name for your country. You are not worshipping the gods. You do not worship them. You know the God of heaven. And that is the one that you worship. Right? So, I said Tayatira is a city that is 27 miles away from Sardis. One of the letters in Asia Minor was written, one of the letters was written to Sardis which is also another place, another city in Asia Minor. Now, I want to tell you about Sambata. Sambata is the, was the god, the, can you give me another color, the marker? I do not want to continue using black. I want to use another color. Please find me another color of the marker, the board marker. I want to use a different color. Sambata or Sambata. It is the most prominent god of Tatira. The most prominent god of Tatira. We also know that Lydia was a woman 
who sold purple robes, purple cloth materials uh, in Tyatira. And the Lord opened her heart to believe the message that Apostle Paul preached and she believed and she was saved. Sambata. Tell your neighbor Sambata. Oh, Sambata. Now, Sambatha is written like this, or it is also written like this, but it is pronounced the same, Sambatha or Sambethe, but it is pronounced as Sambatha in both cases. This God of Sambatha, it was a God of several things as usual, when people looked for another God, they had three major problems, problems to do with material wealth. People had, had problems to do with fertility, fertility and plagues. Then, spiritualism. These are the three major reasons why people would acquire a god. You know, gods in the then time, uh, the then times were acquired for specific purposes. A society may find itself in different, in serious problems with the plagues. There could be plagues of swarms of locusts which come from nowhere and they devastate all your crops to the level where you end up in drought. You can't be able to feed yourselves. You had a good rain season. You had planted your, your, your crops in good time. You expected to harvest well. But because of a plague of locusts, you no longer have food. There were plagues like that and there were plagues of diseases. There could just be a disease outbreak which, you, which would kill a lot of people in the, in, the, in, the, in the community. Plagues of leprosy, plagues of boils, plagues of uh, other strange diseases which can only happen for a specific period of time and then they disappear. But those plagues would claim a lot of people and if a community continues to in, encounter those plagues, they would then say, these things are spiritual. We need to find a God that can address this plague. So in a community, there would be people in charge of governance. They were going to be instructed by their leaders in government to go outside the kingdoms to look for a God that can stop the plague. They were rain-making gods which specialized in bringing rain. If there are years, successive years of droughts, no rain coming down, and then people are now in, 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 in droughts, they can't feed themselves, and people die of hunger, they were going to acquire gods. And there were problems also with the fertility. People in a community may find themselves in a situation where women are failing to conceive. Or maybe they are conceiving and giving birth to children that are handicapped, blind, crippled, they are unable to walk. Those things happened in those days. And then there would be another problem of women conceiving and only bringing, giving birth to girl children. And the kingdoms would say, we are now on a risk of extinction. Was if we don't have enough boy children in a generation, that generation is not going to be manned by women, and that is going that by men, and people are going to be in, in trouble when this kingdom goes to war against other kingdoms. The soldiers are going to be few because there are few men, and therefore we will be wiped out. So they would acquire a god that will enable their women to give birth to boy children. In Zimbabwe, we have those gods. Yeah. Those are the gods. 
Kanzi kwa kuchinzi kuna mbuya wanogo na kuchika Vachichinja nyoka zemu kazi Anga wachita wana wasikana Ano berega wakumana Anga wachiberega wakumana Anita wasikana Sinoto iti katinazo shumarish muno We have those gods here in Zimbabwe So Sambata was one such a god Hallelujah but the doctrine of Sambata was in the hands of a certain woman of Tayatira who was a wife of a certain Sambata, Sambata bishop. The name of that woman is not neither in history or in the scriptures. It's not there. Hallelujah. Amen. So... I want you to understand that Sambata is a god of Babylon. But he was hired by the people of Tatira because of the services that I have written above there. Fertility problems, plague problems, wealth, material wealth, and spirituality. Every community relied on certain sorcerers and magicians who were able to perform extraordinary uh, wonders and wondrous acts and activities so that they may challenge other deities of other countries to supremacy. So this is the history of Sambata. Sambata is a God with a Chaldean and a Persian origin. Sambata Shumari, Chine Muzi, Chweku, Chikaradia, Kanakova Persia. Saka Kuchuana, Shirim Asia, Maina, Chaga Chato, Iowa, Patatira. Now, the people of Tatira consisted of amalgamation of races. The Asians were there, the, the, the Syrians were there, the people from Greece and the Jews were also there. And, and all the people that were in Tatira were addicted to the worshipping of Sambatha. So when God wrote this letter to Tatira, addressing the idolatry that the certain people that believe in Tatira who are coming into the church that is a Tatira, but bringing with them the doctrine of Jezebel. The doctrine of Jezebel. The word Jezebel is referring to uh, a trouble, some woman. The word Jezebel is used by God to refer to uh, a church or a woman who has got the same characteristics like the Jezebel characteristics that Jezebel, who was the wife of Ahab, the king of Israel, we know that Jezebel was a priestess of Sidon, who was married to King Ahab of Israel. She crossed the border, border from Sidon, she, she got married to Israel, and when she came, she brought with her the image of Baal, who then became an imposed god unto the children of Israel, and that brought the anger of God, and there was drought for three and a half years in the days of the assignment of Elijah. And we know that all the prophets of God, except for those who were hidden in the cave by Obadiah on account of the plan of salvation, everybody else was murdered by Ahab, who was being stayed by his wife Jezebel, including Naboth, the vineyard men. So Jezebel represents three things as well. Jezebel represents idolatry, the doctrine of the Antichrist. Jezebel represents deception. Jezebel represents seduction, deception, stroke, seduction into idolatry. Jezebel represents replacement doctrine, replacement theology, where people who are worshipping their God in a manner designed by God 
under the law provided by God. They just wake up one day with a nation receiving an announcement from the state house that the queen imposes that everyone should begin to worship the God that she brought from her native land. She imposed Baalism in Israel, Jezebel. Jezebel represents an imported gospel. Jezebel represents a foreign doctrine imported into the kingdom of God from nations and kingdoms afar off. She turned the Rosh Bar, Chakanga Chisirichem Israel, Chaka import wa Chichipinda mu Israel ne kurorwa kwa gogo Jezebel. Jezebel also represents ruthlessness. Ruthlessness towards the people of God, towards the servants of God, towards believers of the gospel of Christ. Jezebel represents an empire of tyranny. Saka, tirudakuti tuone kuti Jezebel had died a long time ago at the time of the writing of the book of Revelation. She died before Jesus was born. The letter to the church of Tertira was written to a church that was established after Jesus had gone back to heaven. There was no Jezebel, a physical Jezebel, a lady known as Jezebel in Tertira. The word Jezebel is figurative. The word Jezebel is uh, idiomatic. It is symbolic of a church system with the characteristics of this woman, Jezebel, the wife of Ahab. So, the church is doing good. God says, I, I know your works. I know your faith. I know your service. I know everything that you are doing. It is good. The works that you are doing now are far better than the works that you started to do at the time of the inception of the church at Tatira. But I have a few things against you. The things that God has against Tatira are all enshrined in the name Jezebel. If there was no Jezebel in Tatira, God was not going to be having an issue with the church at Tatira. Hallelujah. Amen. The church at Tatira is a good church, but Jezebel is a problem. How do we connect the trumpet that was blown by the fourth angel and the letter to the church at Thyatira? Isaiah chapter 13. Isaiah chapter 13. Isaiah chapter 13. Before we read verse number 10, which is the verse that I intend to share with you, I want you to see that Isaiah chapter 13 was written concerning Babylon. Verse number one says, The painting of Babylon, which Isaiah the son of Amos did see. Lift up your banner upon the high mountain, exhort the voice unto them, shake the hand that they may go into the gate of the nobles. I have commanded my sanctified ones, I have also called my, my mighty ones for my anger, even them that rejoice in my highness. The noise of a multitude in the mountains, like as of a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together. The Lord of hosts mastereth the hosts of battle. They come from a far country, from the end of heaven, even the Lord and the weapons of his indignation, indignation to destroy the whole land. How ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand, it shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt. And they shall be afraid, pains and sorrows shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. They shall be amazed one at another, their faces shall be as flames. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. For the stars of heaven 
and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause the light to shine. And I will punish the world for their evil, and the wicked for their iniquity, and I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease, and I will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. Hallelujah. So whenever the Bible paints a picture of a darkened sun, a darkened moon, darkened stars, it is going to invite us to learn of two things. Number one, whenever the Bible talks about a darkened sun, it is talking about judgment on the people of disobedience. Number two, darkness itself it's a sign of evil. Darkness is a sign of a false gospel. Light is the message of salvation. Darkness, the message of the Antichrist. Are you getting it? So, the light that was supposed to shine for the whole day has been reduced because of the one third of the sun that has been darkened, one third of the moon. That has been darkened. One third of the stars has been darkened. I would also want to invite you to the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, whereupon we shall see the usage of these three the sun, the moon, and the stars to see what it means the other dimension of the stars, the moon, and the sun being darkened. 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verse number. Let us see where we can start from. We are going to start from verse number 35. But some men will say, How are the dead raised up, and with what body do they come? Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened except it die. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bear grain. It may chant of wheat or of some other grain. But God giveth it a body as it had pleased him, and every seed is on body. All flesh is not the same flesh. But there is one kind of flesh of men, another of flesh, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is one another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star different from another star in glory. Remember, God spoke unto Abraham and said, Thy children shall be as plenty as the stars of the sky. So the stars represent the children of God. But we know in other places they also represent the angels. The stars represent the children of God. The moon represents the church of Jesus Christ. Remember the woman that was seen in the book of Revelation 12. She trampled upon, she, 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 stepped, she was standing on the moon. Hallelujah. And the sun was upon her head. Because the sun also represents the gospel of Christ. That's why the, in Revelation chapter 12, the woman had, what happened in verse number 1, and there appeared a great one in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon under her feet. The woman was wearing the sun, but the moon was under her feet. The moon that was under her feet represented the gospel of the Old Testament. The Old Testament as a church, it was under the woman because the church had gone, it was expired. The New Testament church standing on the Old Testament church because the testimony of Christ in the New Testament is founded on the prophecies of the Old Testament church. So when the moon has been darkened, one third of it, it means the church has reduced the light that it is supposed to use to see where it is going. The sun has been darkened, one third part of one third of the surface of the sun has been darkened. The woman was clothed with the sun. The sun is the gown that the wife of Christ should adorn and wear on the day of the marriage of the Lamb. If one third 
of the gown that the woman is wearing has been taken. What does that mean? It means the gown is no longer pure. The gown is no longer of fine linen. The gown has been tainted. The gown has been devoured. So we are linking the fourth trumpet and the letter to the church of Thyatira. Are you hearing this? The understanding is the doctrine of Jezebel has defiled the church at Tatira. That's why the Lord is saying, I have some things against you. Two thirds of the garment is good. Two thirds of the sun is lighting. The sun is shining. Two thirds part of the sun. Those are the good works that God is commending the church at Tatira about. But one third of the garment has been defiled by Jezebel. Hallelujah. Amen. But let's listen to what God says to the church at Tatira. He says, I have some things against you. What are you doing? He said, you allow that woman Jezebel to preach. Because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which called herself a prophetess, to teach it is to, and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. The problem is not with Jezebel being a false prophetess. The problem is the church allowing the prophetess to teach. Amen. Let her continue to deceive the rest of the people that are in Thyatira, but not my church. Amen. Don't allow Jezebel to preach. Don't allow Jezebel to prophesy. Don't allow Jezebel to teach. That was the contention that God had against the church at Thyatira. Are you hearing this? Church in Thyatira, my other problem is that is why when you go to chapter 9 of the book of 2 Kings, you understand that when Jehu entered into the city of Jezreel to the palace of the king, Jezebel was at the balcony of the third floor, and there were many standing by his side, and Jehu shouted from beneath the third floor, and he said, is there anybody on my side? Is there anybody on my side? If there is somebody that is on my side, throw her down so that she may die. But does anybody remember what she was doing at the balcony? She had painted her face. And painting a face is a sign of seduction, deception, and falsehoods. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's quickly go to 2 Kings chapter 9. Somebody may say, there is no such a scripture in the Bible. So, the fourth trumpet has been blown. Now, 2 Kings chapter 9. Let's hear verse 16. So Jehu rode in a, in, in a chariot and went to Jezreel. For Joram lay there and Ahaziah, king of Judah, was come down to see Joram. Okay, okay. Let's go forward with other scriptures. Uh, verse number 30. And when Jehu was come to Jezreel, Jezebel had of it, and she painted her face and tired her head and looked out at a window. And Read it. verse 31. And as Jehu entered into the gate, she said, Yet Zimri peace who slew his master. And he lifted up his face to the window and said, Who is on my side? Who? And they looked out, and they looked out to him two, two or three eunuchs. And he said, Throw her down. So they threw her down. And some of her blood was sprinkled on the wall and on the horses. And he trod her underfoot. Now, do you see that? When Jehu entered into the city, they stood by his side. And he said, if you are on my side, throw her down. Which means before Jehu entered, they allowed her to paint her face. They allowed her to continue to live. They allowed her to tie her head. They allowed her to stand on the balcony. But when Jehu arrived, he said, if you are on my side, throw her down. The same is God complaining. He says, you are allowing that woman Jezebel. 
So Jezebel is represented by two things in Thyatira. Number one, idolatry in which people are worshipping this subverted God. The second thing is the prophetess in the church of Sambata, who happens to be the wife of a bishop in Thyatira, she also represents that Jezebel. Amen. She is the one who promulgated the gospel of the Sambata God. This God who was hired from Babylon thousands of years before the church in Thyatira was established. The sun has been darkened. Now, why is God talking about Jezebel to the church of Thyatira. Because if this is, is not addressed, the sun is going to be continuously darkened until there is no more light in Thyatira. One third of the sun that has been darkened, God is telling you, if you do not challenge a false doctrine, if you do not challenge a false message, a false preacher, your sun is being darkened, there will be darkness, more and more darkness, and the darkness shall overcome the whole nation progressively. Challenge the false gospel so that you may destroy the works of darkness. Let there be love. And in chapter, in chapter number, chapter number four, verse number six of Second Corinthians, the Bible says, Second Corinthians chapter four, verse six. God who commanded light to shine out of darkness and shine in our hearts to give the light, the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The light is no longer the bulbs in our rooms, the candle in our rooms, the torch in our hands, the headlamps of our cars. No, the light is now in the knowledge of the gospel of Christ. So the sun is representing the message of Christ. It has been darkened by the false message coming out of the Sambata religion, which is in Thyatira, which is being, which is coming to dilute the gospel of Christ in the church. Chirikunzi church is in Thyatira as a city. Chirikunzi church is not tender, but in Thyatira. Masika tende, no waka tende Sambata. When we pick up a church, we should not turn down, but we are going to pay church. We are going to fill the van with church that is sicker than Sambata. So come on, ah, we should come and turn the city into a church. We should pick up a church. Ano chenge ta kutenda, ano sungiri na kushikandi shizoka, acha piwa chipochinunzi the 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 morning light. Hallelujah. Let us stand up Amen. to our feet. Let us stand up to our feet. We are going to read the final scripture to address this issue. Hallelujah. Amen. We are going to, to read another scripture. Amos chapter 8. We are going to read Amos chapter 8. I want to see where we can start to read this chapter. Verse number four. Hear this, O ye that swallow up the needy, even to make the poor of the land to fail, saying, When will the new moon be gone, that we may sell corn? In the Sabbath that we may set forth with, making the effort small in the shekel great, and falsifying the balances by deceit. That we may buy the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of shoes. Yea, and sell the ref refuse of the wheat. The Lord hath sworn by the excellency of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of their works. Shall not the land tremble for this, and everyone mourn that it dwelleth therein, and it shall rise up holy as a flood, and it shall be cast out and drowned as by the flood of Egypt. And it shall come to pass in that day, say the Lord God, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon, 
and I will darken the earth in the clear day. And I will turn your feast into mourning and all your songs into lamentation. And I will bring up sackcloth upon all loins and boldness upon every head. And I will make it as the morning of an only son and the end thereof as a bitter day. Behold, the days come, say the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirsty for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east, they shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. And in that day shall the fair virgins and the young men faint for thirst. They that swear by the sin of Samaria and say, Thy God, O Dan, liveth. The men of Beersheba liveth. Even they shall fall and never rise up again. When God talks about his wrath, his anger, he then says, I am going to I will cause the sun to go down at noon. When people have got the sun above their heads, they are living by the providence of God. When the sun goes down, it is a sign of the anger of God, the wrath of God. It is a sign of judgment. So when the sun is darkened for a third, it means God is going to pour his anger on that part of the sun that is darkened. God is, God is going to pour down his wrath upon that part of the moon that is darkened. God is going to pour his anger on those parts of the stars that have been darkened. Jezebel. I'll kill her children with death. I asked her to repent. She did not repent. She's teaching false doctrines. She's seducing and she's committing fornication. She's encouraging and teaching some of the believers to commit fornication. Fornication happens when one abandons their matrimonial bed to go into another bed to defile themselves with lust. So fornication is spiritual in that scripture. It is not a fornication that is physical where a man goes to bed with another man's wife. No, it is a fornication of a believer who has been espoused to Christ according to 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 2, which Apostle Paul uses to say, I've got a jealous, I'm jealous with a godly jealous towards you, for I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. A virgin that is reserved for Christ for the marriage of the Lamb is now being found, being defiled by the doctrine of Sambata. Jesus is your husband. Why are you found on the bed of Sambata? That is the Jezebel fornication. You are defiled. Therefore, another part of the star has been darkened. So the Sambata religion is the Jezebel that God is addressing. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for this message. We continue to learn more and more and more and more. And we do this as we continue to nature the inward man that he may be conformed to Christ. We thank you, Lord, for opening the vaults of heaven that we may receive the treasures 
that are incorruptible. We thank you, Lord, for bringing your children unto you through the message of Christ. Thank you, Jesus, for teaching us that like Tyatira, we cannot allow any foreign message, any foreign doctrine to defile us. We do not want to be the stars whose one-third of surface is darkened. We do not want to be the moon whose surface has been darkened on account of the foreign doctrines that are brought, that are smuggled into the church by those that are meant for eternal condemnation. We thank you, Lord, for teaching us that we have got to uphold the faith till you come. We have got to prepare ourselves for the day of the Lord so that when you come, you don't see any blemish on the garment of the bride of Christ. Thank you. Amen. Clap hands for Jesus. Clap hands for Jesus. Let's take our seats briefly. If there's somebody who says the same one that the same one that um, I've heard tonight has pricked my heart to salvation. I believe that the Lord is calling me unto himself. I'm being invited to Christ. This is an opportunity for you to come and respond to the call of salvation and become a child of God. I'm giving you this opportunity that you may repent and be a child of God. If there is one like that here, please walk forward and the Lord will receive you. Let's clap hands for them. Let's clap hands for them. Ah, another one is coming. Let's clap hands for him. your right hand so that you may repeat this confession after me. It is called the confession to salvation. The Lord instructed that when a sinner is coming to repentance, they have got to make the confession that acknowledges the works that he accomplished for them at Calvary. So I want you to repeat after me, say, Lord Jesus, I testify and confess, believing fully with my heart that you are the son of the living God. I am a sinner and I confess that you died for my sins and God raised you on the third day. May you forever be glorified. Amen. Let's clap hands for Jesus. Pastor Rengui, lift up your hand. Pastor Rengui is there. Go to her. She's going to speak to you concerning other procedures to salvation like baptism. But you shall know what is required of you and how to begin the journey of faith. Greet one another and let's go home. Just find a few moments to greet a few brethren. Ask them.